Welcome to the Swim Swim Podcast. I'm your host, Coleman Hodges. Joining me today, we've got a very special guest, five-time Olympic champion, 15-time world champion. Today, we have the pleasure of sitting down with Katie Ledecky. Hey, Coleman. Thanks for having me. <laughs> For joining us today, Katie. I'm excited to talk to you. Uh, in the run up week before your first official race in San Antonio at the Pro Swim next weekend, um, your first official race of, of 21 and in quite a while, can you tell me? I, I was wondering this have you even raced at all in the last like eight months? I think there was like a time trial at a Stanford meet, but other than that, it seems like you've been pretty quiet. I swam one meet at Stanford and one meet at Cal. The Cal meet was a uh, short course. So I swam two events there, I think short course. And then I swam one long course, 800, I think in the fall against Cal. And then we did a suited up week in January, the same week as the meet in San Antonio and Richmond. And so we kind of mimicked that meet and did prelims and finals for however many days, I guess, four days to get kind of a full schedule of racing in and, and do that. So that come March, it wasn't the first time that we were doing that. Gotcha. And, and just where you're at today, um, how would you analyze, you know, in the pool, out of the pool, um, where you're, where you're at personally after, you know, this almost a year now of this global pandemic? I'm doing well. I feel very good about where I'm at with training and with racing. I mentioned those couple of racing opportunities, but we've also done some other suited stuff over the past year. So uh, a lot of that and just uh, staying race ready. And I finished up school last fall, which was great. It was great to have those nine months last year to finish up school and really dig into that. And now I'm a college graduate and really focused in on my training and excited to race next week for sure. Yeah. But <clears throat> college graduate, that's exciting. Where, where did you have any turbulence or trouble, I guess, aside from the, the normal things, the things we've heard um, about finishing up classes, do you feel pretty satisfied with, you know, how, how you were able to finish up academically at Stanford? I was, I was really grateful and excited that I had that opportunity to finish up last year. I was taking the 2020 Olympic year off from classes just to be able to train and travel and not have to worry about homework on the road and little things like that. So when the Olympics were postponed, that coincided very nicely with the start of spring quarter at Stanford. And so I decided to hop back into classes in March and I took a full load in the spring, the summer, and the fall, and uh, it was all it was all virtual, of course. But I was I was happy with the experience. The professors did a really great job of still maintaining a sense of community and kind of transferring over the classroom over Zoom and and making it work. And uh, I I enjoyed having that and definitely kept my mind busy and gave me something something else to do as well. Yeah, did. Do you end up missing out on any out of class senior type things you normally would have done like a, like a capstone or an internship or something like that? Nothing, nothing major. I think I, I miss the little things like just going up to a professor after class or sitting next to somebody and just having small talk during class or after class. You couldn't do that over zoom, but I, I, I'm, I guess, I don't know exactly how the virtual graduation is going to work in, in June. I think it's at the same time as Olympic trials. So <laughs> I'll probably be tuning in. I think it's the first day of trials and I don't have an event on that first day. So I think I'll be able to tune in. Uh, I, I've already gotten my diploma in the mail. So it, it's not like there's any suspense or, uh, any, it's, it, it wasn't really a, a big, big celebration or anything and probably won't be in Omaha, but I was just happy to 
finish up last year and uh, had a really great experience at Stanford overall in the past four plus years. So really enjoyed my time. Nice. Um, and, and then on the swimming side of things, I mean, let's take it back to the beginning of this pandemic. Um, were, were you in Des Moines? I was in Des Moines. That's the, the last time I traveled. Okay. That's, which is wild. Uh, so, so coming off of Des Moines, once everything kind of started shutting down, once NCAAs were canceled, how can you take us through those next couple months and what they looked like for you? Sure. The first couple of weeks were pretty crazy after Des Moines. Everything started shutting down and everyone was kind of making decisions about where they were going to go. A lot of people on the college team went home and stayed there for a number of months. I decided to stay here at Stanford. I felt like if pools were shutting down, that the best chance I would have would be that there would be some outdoor pool that would be open somewhere. Uh, ultimately, I realized that everything was shut down and was able to find a backyard pool that I could swim in uh, around here. So that was really great. And I did that from mid-March until mid-June. And then at that point, Stanford started to slowly open back up. I think their outdoor athletic facilities first and started to roll out the testing for the athletes and kind of got started on that. And then uh, there was just a small group of us here at that point over the summer. And then most of the team started coming back in the, the fall, at the same, same kind of time as they normally would for the college season. So that's what those couple months looked like. It was three months in a backyard pool was different. It was something I was very grateful for, something I know a lot of people didn't have. And I tried to just enjoy it and uh, just take a deep breath and enjoy being in the water, enjoy doing something that I, I love every day and maintain my feel for the water as much as I could. Yeah. I mean, that, that period, um, sounds like something, especially for, for any swimmer, but uh, certainly for someone of your caliber, who's, who's running up to those Olympic trials and hopefully Olympics, not something you would, you would get to do really at any point in your career is just take a couple of months to pump the brakes was did that end up being refreshing for you at all a little bit I, I don't know if I would choose to do it again uh in the in the I, I mean if if something like this happened again I would do it the same way I was so happy with the situation the ability to keep swimming uh but I, I missed long course. We were swimming short course, which was again, still, I know more than a lot of people had, but I, I, I did enjoy kind of the, the step back and we were so focused in on Omaha and Tokyo and it was, it did feel like pumping the brakes at, at first and just kind of finding our grounding and figuring out that we were going to have to go day by day for a little bit and then week by week and that we couldn't really plan months in advance for swim meets or racing and other things like that. So I, I learned how to take it day by day and week by week. And I really think Greg was a really great leader in, in helping us through that time and uh, getting us to where we are right now, headed to, headed to a swim meet. Yeah. I mean, during that period also, I think there was so much uncertainty. Like you said, it was a very much day by day for a lot of people in a lot of situations. And I think also, especially in Santa Clara County, I think that was one of the most strict counties about staying in or, or staying distanced. Did that, was that period of really strict isolation um, mentally taxing? Did you find other activities that um, to pick up to spend the time and that maybe even became, you know, vital to make it day by day? It was, it was tough at times, but I think I also appreciated that our county was taking things seriously and that at least at the beginning, we were doing a lot better than a lot of areas in the country. So uh, I knew that if we followed the guidelines that we would all stay healthy and our Stanford swim team has done an incredible job of staying healthy over this past year. And so I'm, I'm really excited to see how they, they do at PAC 12s this week as well. Uh, but 
you know, I, I, as I said, I was taking classes last year and, and that was really great. And I've been able to do a lot of virtual activities, visit children's hospital virtually and visit with a lot of club swim teams. Like I know a, a lot of swimmers have been doing over the past year. And I connected with my family a lot, my friends, we would do cousin trivia nights every Saturday. We're not doing it every Saturday now, but monthly or every two months at least. <laughs> um, so, so that's been fun and I've uh, enjoyed doing that and feel like we're all keeping each other sane and moving forward and focused on, on all of our different goals. Yeah, especially for meeting with um, club teams and uh, you know younger kids in the sport, do you feel like you gained anything palpable from that? For sure. I think I, I saw the resiliency that these young athletes had and the questions that their coaches and the athletes asked were really great questions. And I, I think that they were using it as an opportunity to still improve in the sport and learn and not see it as a setback, but see it as an opportunity to still stay engaged with the sport and do what they could to, to move forward towards their goals. And that's the message that I, I tried to give. And you could just see the positivity and the, the swimming, the swimming community coming together during those, those months. And I think that uh, is, is only making our swimming community stronger. And I hope that we can maintain that moving forward as well. Yeah. The having, you know, now that things are kind of, kind of back to normal, you know, um, normal ish, have you had any time to reflect on that period and feel like you came away with, with tools or, or anything you learned as a swimmer and as a person? I think I'm, I'm still learning. And I think over the next few months, we'll start looking back at this time a little bit more. And especially as we see the summer play out and see how things go and how people swim and all of that, we'll be able to look back and say, Hey, this worked really well. This, this didn't work well. And, and things like that. I think I've really enjoyed getting a big block of training in. I mean, Coleman, you've seen some of our practices. I really liked training. I enjoy training and I, I kind of like having those big blocks of, of training. So I don't think that's necessarily been a bad thing for me. And I feel like I'm in a good spot with my training. I feel like my racing that we have done here has been good over the past couple of months. So I'm excited to see what, what these next few months are going to look like and how racing shakes out. And I'm excited seeing how fast the conference swim meets have been so far, the, the college meets. So I think the, the swimming community is doing pretty well right now. Yeah. Well, now that you brought training up, <clears throat> uh, tell me, tell me about what has training been like these last you know, six months since you've kind of been back into a more normal routine and, uh, how, how does Greg, or how do you and Greg, you know, block that, that huge amount of time without any, uh, competitions to travel to? I think what Greg's tried to do is always give us something to look forward to. So every couple of weeks we would have some sort of a, a racing opportunity. So I think once we got back to Stanford in June, we had a couple months where we were just kind of getting back into long course and that that first day back in long course, I know for all of us, we just felt pretty sore and tired afterwards. <laughs> it, just, it just hits differently than short course. So uh, that was, we spent just a couple months getting back into long course, but we, we got back into it pretty quickly. And we did some racing in August, I think maybe or end of July. And then a couple of weeks later, we did some, some more, but it was maybe more relay based, a little more fun, but uh, still suited up and getting some times and things like that. And then when the college team came back, that was kind of another change and sort of changed up our, our training schedule again, then did more of that mix of short course and long course that we typically do. And we had those meets with Cal to look forward to. So that was great. I was still finishing up school at this point. It was in my last quarter of school. So that was, that was kind of fun and exciting and, 
Uh, and then Christmas training, some of the team went home and it was just a smaller group here for a couple of weeks, but we really got into a good rhythm over Christmas break and just kind of had fun with it and just had had different sets that we would would do and uh, kind of we did a, a, a kind of a test set every Thursday of hundreds and went down in number every week. That was kind of fun and something something different, something we looked forward to every week. And then, I mean, that took us to middle of January and we were all back together and we had that that suited up week that we did the week of the San Antonio meet. And we were kind of trying to figure out if we were going to be able to go to the San Antonio meet, but we felt we made the, the right decision to stay here and uh, given our county and state restrictions and what that would mean on the back end of the trip. And with the COVID numbers really high over the holidays, we felt it was a good safe bet to just stay home and uh, get that racing in. And we all felt like we did, did really well there. And now we've, we've been rolling through January and February and getting some really great training in and looking forward to the meet next week in San Antonio. Uh, okay. Just, just give me a few numbers. Maybe was there uh what, what, what was the test set that you talked about that um, was like over winter that you guys went down in? We did uh, hundreds every Thursday and it was a little different for each of us, but I think I started out at 24 one hundreds and they're on one thirty, I think. And for me, they were all best average, 24, 100 is best average. Um, some other people did hundreds, some people did fifties. And then each week we would drop, I think six. So I think we did 18 the next week, 12 the next week, six the next week. Uh, and, and the goal was to have a faster average each week. So um, that, was, that was a fun set. Good to just see the progression. And again, just another it wasn't straight up racing or suited up or anything like that, but just something each week to look forward to as a little marker to see where we're at. Did, did, did you, did you hold a, a best average each time? I, I think I did. Uh, you know, sometimes it was just by a 10th or two, but I took it. I mean, <laughs> we also tried to keep the range. I know the first time we did it, when we did the 24, my range was really tight and my best average was, a certain time. And then the next week, I think my range, I may have had one or two where I, I kind of slipped up. And so the range was bigger, but the best average was a little faster because I was faster on the ones I was more aggressive on the start. So it was, it was a fun little challenge that, that Greg gave us. And I think we'll probably do that kind of set closer to trials again, just to hopefully be better then than we were in December. It's just kind of a mid-season test set marker for a couple of weeks that we'll be able to see our progress, hopefully progress in a couple months. <laughs> yeah. And so having two, ha having back-to-back -back Olympic years, it, I mean, it sounds really stressful to me and I'm sure <laughs> you approach it differently mentally, but is, does, does this Olympic year, um, feel different for you mentally? Is there a different approach or is it, is it a similar approach and are you able to pretty much go about it the same way you were last year? It It's similar in some regards, but also feels a lot more relaxed. <laughs> I think just given the lack of racing and traveling, the, the biggest thing would be traveling. As I said, I haven't traveled at all since Des Moines. And so I've just just been here in, in this the same environment and haven't had to travel for racing or other appearances or visits. And I really miss my family and I miss visiting home and going home for the holidays and all those little things. But I've gotten into a good routine of video calling my family and all that. So that's that's OK. But um, yeah, I think it's it's been more relaxed just knowing that we've been through it once already sort of kind of a half year and so we're just trying to be better than we were last year in in those months and then 
from you know now is kind of the marker of when we didn't get that lead up to trials. So now it's kind of, this is going to start feeling a little fresh, a little new. And I think at this point, we're all just so grateful that we have this Olympics to look forward to now. And I mean, I know there's still all this speculation out there, but I think we're, we're very set and we have our eyes on June and July. And we just feel like we're moving in the right direction. And that when we get to Omaha, when we get to Tokyo, we're just going to be so grateful that we're there and the performances will take care of itself. I, I do care about my performances, but at the end of the day, I think I'm just going to be so happy that we're there and that we're, we're together as USA swimming at trials and as a world in <laughs> Tokyo and uh, just, just enjoying, enjoying that. And so I think it, it, has given me some perspective for this Olympic year that it's bigger than swimming. Well, Katie, I, I appreciate you sharing that perspective with us today and, and taking the time to sit down and chat with me for a little bit. Um, any parting thoughts before we sign off? I don't think so. I mean, anyone, anyone watching here, keep those spirits up. I know a lot of racing is starting back up so i hope everyone is enjoying it and swimming fast having fun and staying healthy i mean keep wearing those masks and getting tested following the protocols and we'll be on our way to omaha so thanks coleman thank you katie you've been listening to the swim swam podcast stay tuned for new episodes every week you can take Swim Swim Podcasts on the go by subscribing on your favorite podcast platform. Look for links in the description below and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more videos as well.